The objective of this demonstration is to understand the lifting effect generated by the wingsuit of a skydiver. Open a new session of Discovery, close the welcome screen, and then browse for the file wingsuit.dsco. To begin the exercise, go to the Simulation tab and click External Flow. Zoom out to get a better view of the outline of the enclosure preview. Click the green arrow on the right side of the enclosure to assign the inlet face. Set the face underneath the skydiver as the ground plane. The enclosure is then created around the skydiver. If we reorient the model and look at it from the side, we can see that the skydiver is almost at the bottom of the enclosure. Since a real skydiver is surrounded entirely by air, we should move the enclosure to reflect this. We can access the Move tool from the Design tab. Click Move and go to the Model tree at the top left side of the window to select the enclosure. You may need to expand the Wingsuit entry to select the enclosure component. Click the blue handle and drag it down until the skydiver is approximately in the center of the volume. Press the Escape key twice to exit the Move tool. Let's now set up the simulation physics. The default fluid for the simulation is water. Right-click the water and select Edit to change the fluid used in the simulation to air. Press S on the keyboard to exit the material assignment menu. Now, let's adjust the boundary conditions. Let's set a flow velocity of 20 meters per second which is approximately the terminal velocity reached by the skydiver when using the wingsuit. Next, right-click the ground plane and delete it. This will make the ground plane part of the extents, which are free-slip walls, and this is okay for the scope of this exercise. We can now hide the enclosure as well, so let's go back to the model tree and click the Hide Unhide icon next to the enclosure. Let's start the simulation to see how the results look. The default display style for the results is Streamlines. Deactivate the Streamlines and activate the contours with the location set to All Faces and Surface Display Priority set to Outer. Rotate the model slightly, then activate the cut plane and select it. The Move tool will appear automatically. Double-click the green rotation handle to rotate the plane 90 degrees. Then, press S on the keyboard to exit the Move tool. Click the X axis on the orientation cube to return to the side view. As the designers and engineers performing these simulations, it's up to us to make sure that they're as realistic as possible. Otherwise, the results that we generate may not be accurate. Do you notice any problems with the skydiver in the current position and orientation? As you may have noticed, the airflow is traveling from right to left, when typically we'd expect the skydiver to be falling down. The skydiver is wearing a wingsuit, so we'll need to adjust their position accordingly. You can start the Move tool by pressing the letter M on the keyboard. Go to the Model tree again, and holding Control, Select the skydiver and wingsuit. If necessary, you can reorient the model to get a better view. In this case, we're going to click the red drag handle which controls rotation about this axis and press the spacebar. Because we want to rotate the skydiver counterclockwise, which happens to be in the same direction that the arrow is pointing, the value we're going to enter is going to be positive. In this case, we'll use 17.5 degrees and press Enter. Now we can see that the position of the skydiver has been adjusted. Press the letter S on the keyboard to activate the selection tool and click your mouse in the background to deselect the skydiver and wingsuit. Now let's go back to our side view. While Discovery is performing calculations, a white indicator will travel around the hexagon. Once the simulation has finished, the hexagon will be solid green and we can examine our results. If we rotate the model slightly and zoom in, 
we'll notice that the flow is still passing through this wingsuit. As we've learned in a previous video, there are some models where it will be necessary to increase the fidelity to get more accurate results. Thin bodies in Discovery typically require a higher fidelity setting, so let's increase that now. Drag the fidelity setting about halfway and release it. On our machine, the fidelity value is 16.3 millimeters. Depending on your machine, the range of values along the fidelity bar can vary. Try to match the fidelity value we show in the video to the best of your ability. As we can see, there's still room for improvement. Before we increase the fidelity to the maximum value, let's zoom out and check the enclosure. The overall size of the enclosure will also play a role in the accuracy of the results. A larger enclosure uses more of your computer's resources, so one way to improve the accuracy of the simulation is to reduce the size of the enclosure, being careful to avoid affecting the physics of the simulation. First, unhide the enclosure from the model tree. Select the back face of the enclosure and use the pull tool to reduce the size. We can do the same with the faces on either side of the skydiver. Click one face, then hold control and select the other side. You can roll the middle mouse wheel to query select if an object is obstructed by something in front of it. If you've set your options to zoom with the mouse wheel, you'll have to hold control and then roll the mouse wheel. Once the desired object is highlighted, left click the mouse to select it. With both faces selected, click and drag the pull tool to alter them simultaneously. Press S on your keyboard to exit the tool. Now, let's examine our skydiver again. If we zoom in, we can see that the wingsuit is now generating much better results, and we didn't have to increase the fidelity past the halfway point. Let's go back to the home view by pressing H on the keyboard. We can hide the enclosure at this point to get a better view of the results. We'll zoom out a little bit so we can see the entire skydiver. To double check the accuracy of the results, let's select the cut plane and right click and select clip with plane, then click clip. This will slice the model in half along the cut plane. And if we reorient the view and zoom in, we can see how Discovery is treating this geometry. As we can see, there are still some small gaps in the geometry being used by the simulation, so we may need to increase the fidelity further. At about three quarters of the way, the gaps are almost gone, but let's set it to the maximum value. This looks much better, and we don't see any flow passing through the wingsuit. Let's zoom back out. We can right click and disable the cut plane clipping using the same option. Press S on the keyboard to exit the move tool. Now let's examine the pressure contours on the skydiver and wingsuit. Change the results to display static pressure and set the contours to all faces and inner. Hide the skydiver and wingsuit bodies and disable the cut plane. We can see that the back of the skydiver has low pressure areas, while the front of the skydiver is where the high pressure flow is. This is exactly what we'd expect if the skydiver is falling forward towards the ground. The wingsuit increases the exposed surface area which drastically increases the lift acting on the skydiver. Let's look at the velocity again. Unhide the skydiver and wingsuit. Switch the display to velocity and change the contours to all bodies. As we learned in a previous video, we can adjust the values of the velocity that are being shown. Let's go to the lower end of our legend scale so we can see the flow around the skydiver rather than the fast moving air towards the outer edges of the boundary. The home view in this model will give us a good idea of how the flow is behaving as it passes the skydiver. To get an idea of how much lift is being generated, we can define a monitor. 
The monitors can be created from the Monitors tool in the Simulation tab. Click the Monitor tool. Open the Select a Variable drop-down menu and select Force as the variable. Then, box select the Skydiver and Wingsuit bodies. It's important to define the force direction accurately. Here, we select which direction the force is going to be reported in. If we choose this incorrectly, our results will be way off. A good reminder of what direction you want to choose is the orientation tool at the bottom left of the screen. We can see that Z is roughly pointing up relative to the direction the skydiver is falling. So we'll select Z from the menu here. Now that the direction is set, click the green check mark. The monitor is created. Right click the monitor in the list and rename it Lift. Click anywhere in the background then press Escape on the keyboard to exit the Monitor tool. As we can see, the monitor is automatically created and plots the value. A chart will appear showing the monitor value for lift. If we close the monitor chart, the lift value will display as just a single numerical value in the top right corner of the window. This makes it a little bit easier to read. Let's take a look at what the value is for the lift if the skydiver does not have a wingsuit. Go to the model tree and hide the wingsuit. Then click the Exclude from Simulation icon next to the wingsuit component. Our simulation will start over, calculating the values for the skydiver as if they never had a wingsuit on. As we can see, the lift generated by the skydiver without a wingsuit is much, much lower. This concludes the demonstration on understanding the lifting effect generated by the wingsuit of a skydiver.